Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Friday, the end of another working week and a strange day certainly for all of us over here in the UK. I'm sure it hasn't escaped your attention wherever you're watching this around the world that the Queen Elizabeth II died yesterday, uh, ending her 70 year reign on the throne over here. Really weird day here. I live just around by Windsor Castle. I was there this morning having a little walk around where everyone was laying flowers and just a weird feeling of someone who's grown up in the town, went to school in the town, raised their kids in the town. It's, you know, it holds a very special place in my heart and it's a very sad day today. And obviously it's had a big, big impact on the world, specifically also the sporting world which I've got to talk about in this video because all Premier League games this weekend have now been called off that was a decision taken by the Premier League earlier today I'm sure you've seen it I'm sure you've all had your say um I've had my say on it I gotta say I'm surprised by the decision I'm not quite sure it's the way to go but I know everyone everyone's gonna have a different opinion on this one because it's such a just a sub, sort of subject that we've never had to discuss before or the decisions haven't been ma had to be made before, not for 70 years anyway, over here. So it was a difficult situation for everyone, for football authorities. Um, but it just feels to me, and this is my personal opinion, obviously, that they just got this one wrong. And I know people disagree with it. My dad my dad disagrees with me because I've just been chatting to him about it on WhatsApp. Um, and he thinks that they were right to call off the Premier League. Um, and I'm sure lots of other people agree with him as well. But just for me, I just think what was a better way to show respect for the Queen over here? To sit around doing nothing at the weekend, to take a decision that's going to impact millions of people, it's going to impact local businesses, everything like that for, with the football being cancelled. Uh, is that a better way to respect the Queen? Or would it be to carry on as normal, which the Queen always, that was her mantra wasn't it to carry on as normal to have packed stadiums singing each everyone every stadium singing a national anthem before the game everyone showing their respects saw at west ham last night the impromptu national anthem and how just you know spine tingling that was to me that just feels like the better way to pay the respects and it's just feels odd as well that pretty much every other sport is going to be going ahead this weekend rugby all professional rugby is going ahead the golf at wentworth you know, just down the road from Windsor is going ahead, starting again tomorrow. The Test match cricket is starting again. Just feels like football have got this wrong to me. But again, this is just a personal opinion, and I know that uh, lots of people are going to disagree with that. Um, and it, it will be wait to see now. I just think for the football calendar as well. I mean, the football calendar is absolutely crazy because of the World Cup and having a stop. And I think from December, when we restart again in December, whatever it's Boxing Day, there's going to be about twenty. There's now going to be about 26 Premier League games they need to fit in, plus potentially two um, League Cup games, whoever gets that far, FA Cup, up to about sort of eight Euro European games, all from December the 26th through to June because of obviously what's happening with the World Cup. It just seems, I mean, where are they going to fit these games in? I just don't really see it, especially if next weekend gets cancelled too, which we don't know yet. Decision, decision hasn't been taken yet. That's going to be discussed over the next few days. But what exactly is going to happen next weekend? Certainly in London, because... If the funeral takes place next weekend, which again, we don't know the date for, but if it does, you know, policing presence is going to be huge. I can't see how London clubs are going to be able to stage matches if it is the same weekend as the funeral. So it's just going to be really, really difficult. And I know, as I said, I think the football, they were in a really difficult situation, the football authorities. They're either going to get whatever decision they made, they were going to get criticised for it. And it's something, it's a position they just haven't been in, like I said, for 70 years since it, since this has happened. So it was a difficult one, but personally for me, I just think it's a shame that football isn't going to take place. I just know that a lot of people would have liked to have gone and shown their respects at a football ground in a proper, visible, powerful, global show of respect that we would have seen. You know, the whole eyes of the world are on the Premier League and what more powerful way of showing the nation's respect is there that, you know, before the game, everyone belting out the national anthem from the Queen's face on the um, on the big screens in the stadium. Just, yeah, I just feel like football have got this wrong. The Premier League have got this wrong. The FA have got this wrong. But again, just my opinion. And I know that plenty of you will disagree with me. So, And I have no issue with that, that at all. If, that, if your opinion's opposite on this one, because it's such a difficult subject and such a, a sort of subject that none of us have ever experienced before. No one's right or wrong in this, really. Everyone's going to have their opinion. We'll, we'll wait and see what happens in terms of future announcements. Arsenal, before next weekend, have obviously got the game at home on Thursday night against PSV in the Europa League. 
Uh, all Arsenal are saying at the moment is that uh, information about f- forthcoming matches will be shared uh, once they have it. So there's going to be lots of meetings going on over the next couple of days to decide exactly what happens with the European games, with the um, uh, with the Premier League games. You think with Europe it's going to be even more difficult. You think how many PSV fans are going to be flying over and have already booked all their travel. You know, can you really call that off Tottenham? I know like Tottenham are going over to Lisbon for the Champions League next week. Can you suddenly call that off and it impact all those pl- all those fans who are flying across the world to watch their teams in it, across Europe? I just I just don't know, but we'll wait and see. So that's the latest when it comes to football um, in relation to the death of the Queen. Um, last night there was a football match. Obviously, it felt strange to even talk about it. The game, the announcement from. Buckingham Palace came pretty much bang on half time yesterday and I think we were all expecting it as the game started and went ahead you know and we, it was obvious over here that announcement was going to come very soon and that, that how things were moving but it was just so it's all played out amid a very strange and somber atmosphere the game itself I thought Arsenal played pretty well but as Arsenal always seem to do, they made things very difficult for themselves. As a game, they should have won very, very comfortably. And this is something they need to sort out. They just need to be a little bit more clinical, don't they? Because they made that game too hard for themselves. They see, they're finding in a quite impressive way of conceding goals when it just looks almost impossible to concede because they're so on top. Yet suddenly they just, you know, one shot and a goal. And it happened again yesterday. Just a stupid tackle from Nketiah in the box, give away a penalty. And suddenly you're going in at half time that you've totally dominated the first half. You're going in at half time, one all rather than one nil ahead. Great goal by Marquinhos um, in the first half, which I'll t- talk about him a little bit later on. Second half, again, I thought Arsenal, you know, totally dominated. They had all the ball. They got themselves back in front through Eddie's header. He deserved that. He played very well. And then last 10 minutes, again, because I hadn't put the game away, it all got a little bit nervy. Zurich had a bit of a go. Arsenal, not really under too much pressure, but you know they've just got to finish games off. They've got to kill games off, because if not, you're always going to be under pressure towards the end of a match, and it, it worked out that way yesterday. But at the end of the day, they won. They won 2-1. It's a perfect way to start uh, the Europa League campaign, sitting top of the group at the moment after the first game. The other game between Bodo and PSV finished 1-1. So Arsenal, two points clear ahead of their game against PSV next Thursday and there was lots to like about some of the performances in that team yesterday Marquinhos especially I thought played really really well uh, got his goal got an assist for the winner as well should have set up a goal for Mar- uh, for Martinelli in the first half with some really good play down the right and a very good ball in with his left foot um, unfortunately Martinelli got his head all wrong put it wide but he should have scored and I think that was quite promising as well that the, that cross and the cross which led to Nketiah's goal were both left footed so as a winger you don't just want to be a bit of a one-trick pony where you've only got one foot to get a ball in. You want to be able to deliver a decent ball uh, with both feet. We've seen, like, say with Nicolas Pepe at times when he was there, it was always a case of, right, don't let him cut in on the left foot, get him down on his right foot, and then he's not going to be able to deliver very well. And it was it became quite easy for some defenders to mark against. But Marquinhos seemed to show yesterday, and this is only in fleeting, this is fleeting evidence. It's like the first time I've properly watched him. But it just felt pretty good that it wasn't just a case of he has to go on his right and whip it in on his right foot. He can cut in on the left and deliver a good ball in from the left-hand side with his left foot as well because they were two really good crosses. His finish was his right foot. That was a great finish. Um, good pace as well and determination to get on the end of that breakaway because when you see from the different angle where he started once Vieira had got that ball and had played it onto Eddie, you kind of watch where... Marquinhos started his run. He was behind the defender, but he showed lots of determination, really good pace to bomb forward, get in support of Inketia, get in front of the defender, and then it was a really good calm finish as well on the run because he had a lot of time to think about that as the ball was coming in. He had to get his feet right. He could have easily put it wide, put it over, but he kept his head and finished it really, really well. And that's a promising performance. He saw what it meant to him as well. He was literally in tears almost as a, when he was celebrating that goal because it was a big moment for him, his debut and uh, to score on that debut is very you know impressive stuff. So well done, Marquinhos, and that was a really promising display from him. Elsewhere, I thought Vieira, this was our first proper look at Vieira as well, and I liked what I saw there. Um, obviously, we know he's a good player. We know he's got good technique. We know he can set up chances. He's got a really good vision. He can pick a pass. But what I liked about that performance yesterday he was his strength and his physicality because he looks small, and that's always been the worry, isn't it? It's, it's like, can he? is he going to be able to cut it in the Premier League? Admittedly, it was the Europa League last night. It wasn't the Premier League, but still, you know, it was some meaty challenges put in. But... He stood up to everything pretty well, I thought, which was which was good. He got a few kicks, he got straight back up, but he showed good body strength when he was in a sort of almost hand combat duel with people when they were sort of trying to 
throw him off the ball and he stood up to it pretty well. Spun his man really well for the goal. Really good ball to Inketia, which you'd expect from Vieira. But positive performance from him. It's our first look. I think he would have been under a little bit of pressure because he would have known that everyone was going to be focusing a little bit on him and how, how he performed. He would have been desperate to perform well. And um, the fact that he did perform well, I think, was really positive for him, positive for Arsenal as well. And, um, you know, him and Marquinhos, I thought, were definitely the two standout players. But having said that, I also think Eddie Nketiah played really, really well and absolutely deserved his goal. And just carries on the impressive start to the season that Nketiah has had for Arsenal. He's made a big impact every time he's come off the bench in the Premier League. He's made an impact. And um, it's really hard to do that in the Premier League. Really hard to get straight up to speed when you've only been given 20 minutes or so. But he's just been really impressive every time he's come on the pitch you thought yeah that's a really good cameo from Inketia. and um, this was his first start he would have wanted to do well and good play to set up the first goal for Marquinhos held the ball up well really well actually during the whole game he led that line really impressively and then he got himself his goal as well with the header which was good back post header he had to get it down head it down at the keeper's feet he did that <laughs> all I could think of when I saw that goal was I wish he did that at Goodison Park last season just after Everton had made it 1-1 in that game that Arsenal lost and Ketty had an absolute sitter which he missed hit the post with I think um, in that game and then Everton went straight down the pitch and won it through Damari Gray a couple of minutes later and I just couldn't get that out of my head after watching that goal for Nketiah yesterday but yeah, I thought those were the two standout performances for him I've feel a little bit sorry for Reese Nelson, I have to say, because he would have been looking at the Europa League this season and hoping it was going to be an opportunity for him to make a bit of an impact. So obviously, he's got this injury now, which has ruled him out, and he probably was sitting there yesterday watching Marquinhos perform the way he did on the right-hand side and thinking, oh, God, you know, I'm going to be even further down the pecking order now when I do come back and do get back fit. So I felt a little bit sorry for him. Um, but, you know, everyone in terms of who played and... Um, they just they just did all right. They just got to sort themselves out. Matt Turner was an interesting one. He, I thought he started off pretty shaky. Um, there was a couple of moments where A with the ball at his feet and once when he was trying to claim a cross, it was just after he'd sort of had that bit of an issue with the ball at his feet when, to be fair, Gabriel didn't help him with the back pass. But he just looked a bit nervy. But as the game went on, I thought he improved Turner. He got a little bit of confidence. He came out and claimed a couple of decent crosses. Didn't really have to do anything in terms of shot stopping because they didn't really threaten or have many shots on target. But they did deliver a few decent balls in towards the end. And uh, I thought Turner sort of improved on that as the game went on. But I think certainly the jury's still out on him a little bit. We're going to have to watch him a little bit more during this Europa League campaign to get proper judgment on just um, what sort of player he is. That's about it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Everyone, do appreciate your time. As always, anything you've agreed with, disagreed with, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll try and keep you updated as I can when we find out exactly what is going on when it comes to Arsenal's fixture list over the coming couple of weeks. Speak to you soon.